So today I want to just talk to you. I'm going to go through a few scriptures today. And, and we're, the title of this sermon is real simple. Sunday was Jesus fasted. And today we're going to be talking about Jesus said that we would fast. So Jesus fasted, but then he goes, he said that we would fast. So let's look at the scripture, foundational scripture tonight. And it's Matthew chapter 9, verse 14. And it says, one day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do? So we see this scripture that the disciples, not of Jesus, but of John the Baptist, he's the one that baptized Jesus. And John the Baptist had disciples and they would fast. And then the religious leaders of the day would also fast. But they were looking at Jesus' disciples and they were saying, but you guys, your disciples don't fast. And he was asking, why? And I'm going to answer that in a, in a minute. Well, Jesus is going to answer it. Jesus replied, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and they will fast. And you might say, well, what is that? That sounds like a whole bunch of poetry, but this is what it is. The groom represents Jesus. And what he was saying is, there's no reason to fast because I am with them. So what was the question? Why didn't the disciples fast? The answer is very simple. The answer is because Jesus was with them. Now, the reason we fast, so, so why do we fast then? Isn't Jesus with us? Well, when Jesus left, the groom left, he said after the groom leaves, he died, he resurrected from the dead, ascended to the Father. He said, then we'll go into a time of fasting. Now, there's an assumption in this portion of Scripture. This is an assumption that believers have Jesus living inside of them, but even though he's living inside of us, we can be far away from God. Well, that doesn't make sense. How can he be living inside of me and my heart be far away from God? Have you ever felt like you need to be closer to God? Even though Jesus' spirit is living in you? Well, is that possible? It is possible. This is how possible it is. Have you ever, like, you live with a group of people and, and they're living in your home and you don't talk to none of them? And there's no relationship? And, and you're living in the same, there's couples, husband and wives, living in the same house. They don't sleep in the same bedroom. They don't have, all they do is grunt. Hey, uh, how you doing? Uh, nothing's happening. There's no relationship. You can be close in proximity. Doesn't mean that you're developing a relationship. So what fasting does, so why do we fast? Number, I'm going to give you two reasons we fast. Two main reasons we fast. Number one, to be closer to Jesus. To build a closer relationship with Jesus. There's, and, and, and this is going to be intentional. If you're going to have good relationships, you're going to have to do your part to draw close or keep the relationship going. So fasting is a great way that we can intentionally come closer to God and eliminate all distractions that are, and I'll say distractions that have been keeping us away from developing a relationship with God. Now, not everybody here in this room or not everyone at home has the same relationship with God. There's some of us that are closer to God, and doesn't make you better. You're just closer to God. And there are some of us that are like away from God. And this is what God is saying. Every single one of us can have a close, intimate relationship with God. There's no one, no believer, that has to be far away from God. You know, we, we I, I've said this before, but I want to say it again. We, uh, me and my family, we, we had at one, at one time a fast food restaurant, and it was named Burrito King. And, and Burrito King, and we're Puerto Ricans. We, we didn't even know what a burrito was until we came to California. Because we mostly cook rice and beans and stuff like that. And so I, I, my dad says, we're going to make a, a, we're in a fast food restaurant, and we're going to make burritos. So my mom, she just made Puerto Rican burritos. 
She, I mean, there was a certain way we seasoned it. They never tasted burritos and tacos the way we made them because actually it was Puerto Rican Mexican fusion is what it was. But, I, but he had a t-shirt that we all wore when we worked there. I worked there and never got paid. I got fired one day and he fired me, but I never got paid. I remember the day he fired me. He goes, you're fired. I go, I'm out of here. You're not paying me anyways. No, that's not. But anyways, on the back of the shirt, it said this. It, on the front, it said Burrito King, right? And on the back, it said, if you leave here hungry, it's your own fault because we got food. And so what does this have to do with our relationship with God? This is the, this is the main, real important point. You're as close to God as you want to be. That means if you want to be closer to God, you can be closer to God. Let's look at the scripture in James 4a. It says this, come close to God. And God will come close to you. Come near, approach him, and God will come close to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to fast to get closer to God. We're going to get rid of distractions. That means you can't get close to God if you don't give time to God. You can't come too close to God if there's no prayer time. You can't get close to God if you're not coming to church. You can't get close to God if you're not reading your word. You can't get close to God if you're not worshiping. It's relationship. We got to put in time in this relationship. And the more time you put in is what God's saying. If you'll just make a little effort to draw close to you, I promise you this, I'll draw close. If you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. Why would God draw close to us? Because he wants a close relationship with us. So why does he wait for me to draw close? Why don't he just draw close? Well, God's already done everything to have a relationship with us. He left heaven to come to earth. His son died, resurrected, suffered for our sins. And he says, I've made the move. Now you make the second move. What he's saying is this. He's saying this. Why? I've done everything I can to draw close to you, but I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I don't want to have a relationship that I'm forcing my relationship on you. I want you to want me. Wow. So we could, I, I want you to get this. When God's drawn closer to you, he's not loving you more. He already loves you with everything. He's love. He loves you. He's sold on you. But when we draw closer, this is what happens. Our love for God grows. So the reason we fast is to get closer or come near to God. See, fasting is what it's saying. Fasting is saying to Jesus. To Jesus. And you know why I said Jesus? Because, because we could like gen make this all generic. God. But I want you to know, Jesus. It's saying to Jesus. He has a name. He wants a relationship with you. It's Jesus that died for you. It's Jesus that's knocking on your heart's door. You can have a relationship with a person named Jesus. Do you know him? Because if you don't know him, you are missing out. Or maybe you started as a Christian and you got saved, but it kind of ended there. The pursuit of Jesus kind of stopped when things started getting a little better. And now you started thinking, you know what? Those clubs, the clubs don't look so bad anymore. And, and I know I got in trouble and it was a mess. And you're starting to think, man, you know, this relationship is not satisfying me. And it could it be that a relationship is not satisfying you because you're not putting time into the relationship? That you don't know him better? Well, we can know him. Now, now, fasting is saying to Jesus, I value my relationship with you more than anything, including food. We're not fasting because it's a religious thing to do. We are fasting to eliminate all distractions that have gotten in the way of our relationship with God. So we're going to take some inventory. What has gotten, gotten in the way of your relationship with God? You got 24 hours a day. Do you have any time in your schedule for prayer? Do you have any time in your schedule to read your Bible or read a good Christian book? Do you have any time in your schedule to listen to preaching, to hear a word from God? Do you have any time in your life to just be silent and say, God, speak to me. I need to hear from you. I'm desperate. I'm dry. I feel tempted I feel overwhelmed. Jesus, something has to change and I cannot change myself. 
move upon my heart, change my desires, make me new, set me free. Lord, you know my son, my daughter, they're not living right. We got chaos in our home. Our home is divided. God, we need you to intervene. I just lost my job, Lord. I know you're my provider. And I thank you, Lord, that door closed. But there's another door opening. Father, I'm asking you to open the right door for me. Father, I'm feeling lonely. Lord, I want some companionship. I need your companionship. Father, send me some friends and send me some disciples, some people I can take care of. God, what is your vision for my life? Well, I was created with a purpose. I, you have a dream for my life, a vision for my life, and I'm kind of confused. I don't even know what life is about. Sometimes I think it's for them, but not for me. Lord, speak to me. And if you do that, God is going to say, you're drawn close to me. I've been waiting for you to draw close to me. Here it is. Here's the vision. Here's the dream. Here's the help. Here's the passion. Here's the freedom. Here's the joy. Here's the peace. You got it. God is good. So we're saying fasting this is what we're saying. In Philippians 3, 8, it says it best. It says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite Value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. So fasting is saying, I value my relationship with you more than anything, including food. And the scripture goes on to say, for his sake, I have discarded everything else. Counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. We're going to do some inventory. Are there some things that are garbage in our lives or in your life? They need to throw away. What I mean by that is, there might, there, you might have some garbage content. It's garbage. I would even say it's demonic garbage content. It came from the garbage pits of hell. And you're still playing around with it. Maybe there's a relationship that's, that you're in that's totally worldly, sinful, ungodly. It's, in, it's, it's, it's a relationship that stinks spiritually. And, and God has told you it's time to take out the trash. Let it go. I got something better. Do you know some of us can't get better because you, you don't have the faith to let go of what God's telling you let go of? You're thinking, how can I live without this little addiction that I have that no one knows about? And God says, you'd be willing to let it go. You could find the peace and the contentment that I could give you. Let it go. So we're going to spend some time identifying garbage. What's garbage? Garbage content, garbage movies, garbage conversations. People aren't garbage. I want you to get people aren't garbage, but there's things that they carry that are garbage. And if someone's not willing to let it go, then what happens? They walk around with the garbage. And if you're comfortable with that, then you end up with a garbage life. Garbage relationships, garbage future. And what Paul was saying here, I've realized, I've tried it all. I've tried religion, I've tried, I, I've tried, I, I've tried education, not that it's the wrong way, education. What he was saying is, um, I, 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 have, I have position, um, I got a name in society. He goes, I gain all of it. He goes, but all of it, I consider worthless compared to knowing Jesus Christ. My value, what I value more than anything in the world is my relationship with Christ. Well, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me because I value my relationships, my relationships more than I value things. I value my relationship with my wife and my kids and you guys more than I value my car, more than I value any any great things I've accomplished. My daughter, one of my daughters, she's the youngest one. Yesterday, I seen her um, with a sweater and it was black and orange and really cool sweater. And she got this sweater at the thrift store. It's a nice sweater. And then what the sweater says, it was like something like national softball champions. At one point, 
that sweater meant a whole bunch to a team. They went probably through a whole season. They fought. They, 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 they were fighting to become national champions. They became national champions, and they got the sweater. Now my daughter has the same sweater without playing softball once. And what am, I, what am I saying? All those things that they accomplished, everybody moved on, and really, there's nothing of substance, the trophies and everything you gain. I want you to get this. It's only for a short period of time. The only thing that matters will make you whole, make you complete, is your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's, we talked about this for three weeks. That's what's missing. And in the next three weeks, I, I pray that you come out of this with a relationship with Jesus greater than you've ever had. It'll be the most rewarding, the most fun thing, the most powerful thing, the, most re the greatest revelation you'll ever have is this relationship with Jesus. And every one of us are in different places. Some of you out there say, I, don't, I haven't even started a relationship with Jesus. That's okay. Jesus is saying, come on, son. Come on, daughter. Make the move. I've made the move. If I tell you to come, just come and we'll wrap this thing up. I'll introduce myself to you. I'll be your Lord and Savior. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to set you free. I'm here to give you eternal life. I'm here to give you the abundant life. And then I'm here to give you a purpose for living. Man, someone's going to get a new start today. So now, what, why, why do we fast, number one? It's, a, it's, it's number one, to be closer to Jesus. To what? Closer to, Jesus. to be closer to who? Jesus. Can we get closer to Jesus? Right. So the disciples didn't need to fast because they were physically close to Jesus. We need to fast because even though Jesus' spirit is living in us, we can actually be far away from Jesus because we're neglecting our relationship with him. So this is going to be a time where spiritually we're going to say, we're going, we're going to connect with you, Jesus. We want a relationship with you. And that relationship is what's going to get you through. That's what the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who what? who strengthens me. I remember getting rid of the garbage um, and, and um, I remember I was at, I was in, I was going to Cal State San Bernardino and, uh, and, and I was a Christian, but I was empty. So I was trying to find out why I was empty, why I was miserable. And then I found out that it was the garbage I was, the content I was taking in. So this was the content I was taking in the content was music. I had a whole bunch of rap music that was ungodly. Um, when I listened to the rap music and I listened to some of the music I was listening to, it made me feel different. What I mean by that is I felt like after I listened to rap music, I felt like I was a gangster. Like, and when I was listening to that music, I started mad dogging people just driving by like, what? My grandma would pull up like, what? Because that music had a spirit attached to it. I would listen to some of the, the romantic music. And I feel like a playboy. Just the music would, would, would actually bring some emotions. Or One that felt like I could fight anybody. The next one I felt like I was, a, uh, I was Casanova. When I was listening to that music, I look at the girls like. The music. I, I'm a Christian. So after I was done, this is what I realized. I was empty. I was miserable. There was something missing. And I remember the Holy Spirit told me I was... That, that was the day when we had cassettes. So a cassette player, not CDs, cassettes. So I had a shoe box, two shoe boxes in my car full of cassettes. So the, the Holy Spirit told me, get rid of the garbage. You want that or you want me? I go, I want you, get rid of the garbage. And I remember I was on Mount Vernon I ended up taking my two shoe boxes and threw them out the window while I was driving. I looked behind me and cars were crushing my music. 
But you know what happened? I, I know that's littering and all that stuff, but there was a bigger spiritual purpose. The Lord was okay with it. And it caused no car accidents or nothing like that. But at the end, this is, what, this is what happened. I traded that garbage in for a relationship with God, and I started growing. I started hearing from God. I started walking in greater purpose and power, and this is what started happening. I started walking in such power that demons were now manifesting, and I could cast them out. What happened? I draw closer to God, and he, he draw closer to me. Number two, reason we fast. We fast for personal change. Fasting without self-evaluation is pointless. So we're fasting to draw closer to God, but this is a good time to do some personal evaluation. In Isaiah 58, 1, look what it says. This is God speaking to Isaiah speaking, but God's speaking to Isaiah and he's telling him what to do. And this is what God tells Isaiah to do. Shout with a voice of a, of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people, Israel, of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn about me. They act like a, right, like a righteous they act like the righteous that would never abandon, like the righteous that would never abandon the laws of, of its gods. They ask me, they ask me, the people ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending, they're pretending they want to be near me. They're pretending they want to be near me, but they really don't want to be near me. And the reason I know they don't want to be near me, they show up to church and they act like they're righteous, they act like they're pious, they act like they're committed. But tell them about their sins. Because what they really want is their sins. And what's the purpose of fasting if you're saying, I don't want to change? And he says, don't whisper to them. Shout it loud. That's cold-blooded. Imagine if God did that today. And he just shouted loud all your sins. All the sins sometimes that were, I want you to get this, that we're hiding. That's keeping us away from God and our purpose. That don't allow us to serve because the shame and the condemnation is, oh, it doesn't come from God. All that comes from the devil. But he wants you to feel so bad with the sin that you're holding on to that you feel like you could never do ministry. Right? Is, is God speaking to anybody? Come on. I know this is an old school message. We're still talking about we're repenting of sin. But what's the purpose of fasting if we don't want to change? I don't want to be without food for 21 days and come out the same old sinner. I might as well go ahead and eat all the burgers I want to eat and tell everybody I'm fasting. It's the same result. So let's keep going. See, so they asked me to take action on their behalf. What he says, they want a miracle. They want a breakthrough. They're praying to me, pretending they want to be near me. And they even say this, verse 3, Isaiah 58, 3 says, we have fasted before you. They say, why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves. Why don't you even notice it? What they're saying is, we're praying and we're not seeing any breakthrough. We're worshiping and there's no anointing. We're teaching and no one's getting convicted. We're asking and we're not receiving. What's the problem? Aren't you impressed with our going to church? Aren't you impressed with our fasting? Why aren't you acting on our behalf? Because we know how it is to walk with the power of God. And we also know how to walk without the power of God. And right now, we're doing all the right things, but yet getting no results. Right? Someone say, personal change. So, what, so now, and then God answers. 
God answers. So yes, so why do not why am I not impressed? Why am I why am I not endorsing? Why am I not answering your prayers? I'll give you an answer. I'll tell you why I respond. It's because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. Wow. You know what he's saying? How can you be fasting and cussing each other out at home? He goes, you're missing the point. The purpose of fasting is to draw closer to me. The purpose of fasting is for me to transform your life to become more like me. You can't be fasting and at home holding on to unforgiveness on someone that hurts you. Giving people the silent treatment. I, I, will, I, will, I will tell you this. You cannot be right with God if you refuse to be right with your neighbors or with people. Because at that point, you're faking. Because everything is about relationships. So God is not saying, hey, just come to me, forget about those relationships. God is saying, hey, you need to work on your relationships. And as you're working on those relationships, I'll be working on you. And while you're working on those relationships, I'm working on you. This is what's going to happen. You're going to get to know me better. Right? Right? We don't want to come out of a fast still angry and quarreling and fighting and divisive and, right? They're calling the police on us, breaking stuff, rude, cussing people out, flipping people off on the freeway, but you're fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> right? What he's saying is, when, when as, he goes, allow me to purify you. What he's saying is, I know you're not perfect and I know you need work, but let's not act like you don't need work. Let's fast for personal change. I will change you. I will make you everything I've created you to be. But be ready to change. Amen? Amen? Personal change only happens after we acknowledge our sins and are willing to change. So you'll never change until you acknowledge you need change. See, you're not fasting to acknowledge someone else's sins. Someone else's flaws. See, when you don't want to change, you know what happens? When we don't want to change, what we do. We focus on everybody else that needs to change. If you're a blamer, you're not a changer. Who are you blaming for your dysfunction? Who are you blaming for your anger? Who are you blaming for your unhappiness? And as long as you're blaming, you're looking the wrong direction. You should be looking at yourself. Maybe you're looking at your past. They're the ones making me mad. They're the ones that, they're the ones, they're the ones. It's them. And God is saying, no, you are oppression. You are quarreling. You are bitter. You are angry. You are looking for escapes. It's getting quiet in here. There's only three or four people. They're quiet. Now, uh, is anybody quiet? Do you come quiet at home? Because this is a, t see, we're not, we're, we're fasting is some serious warfare business. What we're saying is, devil, anything that you've planted in my life, we're uprooted in this season because you're not going to have any power and authority over me and my family. We're rebuking all of it. We're repenting of all of it. And we're taking out the trash. There might be some clothes you need to get rid of. This is old Pentecostal stuff. You know, you as a Christian, uh, girls, you as a Christian aren't supposed to be wearing hottie, flalotti stuff. No one needs to see your stuff coming out of your clothes. Well, I'm a Christian for Jesus. No, come on, stop it. You need to throw out that clothes. You know why you wear that clothes that's so revealing? Because you're insecure about who you really are. So you're trying to use your, your assets... 
to get attention so no one gets to know the real you. I don't know why I said that. Somebody needs to throw out some Daisy Dukes. You throw them out. There might be some drug paraphernalia you need to get throw out. You don't save an extra pipe just in case. Well, this is my favorite pipe. My girlfriend gave it to me. I love it. I don't smoke anymore, but this pipe. It's attached to the good old days. There might be some alcohol you need to throw out because you are an alcoholic and you got that favor, but it costs so much money. Get rid of it. It's going to cost you your life. It's going to cost you your future. It's going to cost you your destiny. It's going to cost you ministry. Get rid of it. Change. You're a single girl. You should not have lingerie. Well, just, it's just in case. In case of what? In case you fall into bed with a guy? Well, I just want to take some pictures for Facebook. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, I'm not way out there. All I, I know because I, we got Christians that, are, that, are, that right now are just crazy. I can't even say crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Whole nother level. All right, I'm talking to somebody right now. Oh, my gosh, I got to clean all my cars. Oh, my gosh, I got to get rid of all those DVDs. Oh, my gosh, I got to get rid of that app. Oh, my gosh, I got to get rid of that letter. I got to get rid of that pipe. I need to get rid of the, that alcohol. I need to get rid of... Yeah, that's right. Right? Some of you guys need to get rid of your gangster clothes. You want to be a Christian gangster. And God says, there's no such thing. You're a Christian. See, when, you wear, when, when you're wearing the gangster clothes, you start feeling like a gangster. And people start, you, you, start, you have the attitude of a gangster. <laughs> you walk like a gangster. <laughs> Get rid of the walk. Come on, you have a come on, you have a new life, a new walk. It's time for us to say we're done living the way we've been living. That's just a security blanket. I want the real anointing on me. Hmm. Someone say acknowledge. Now God blesses everyone that that acknowledges their, their sin. Look at Matthew five four. Blessed. Say it with me, blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins, repent. They will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Is he saying mourning? You know what we're mourning that for? The past sins that we've committed. There's actually a conviction that comes upon us that we would even cry. The depths of understanding. Lord, my sin has separated me from you. It's hurt me. It's hurt my family. I'm tired of justifying it. I want to call it what it is, Lord. It's dirty. It's been ugly. It's been, I've been selfish. I've been mean-spirited. I've been vengeful. I've been super, super angry. Lord, forgive me for the things I've said and done and the, the, the things I've allowed my eyes to ponder, my ears to hear. Forgive me for indulging in things that I know do not belong to you. Lord, forgive me for grieving you. Forgive me. He says, those that do that, this is what God says, they will experience the comfort 
of God's presence. That word comfort means to call to one side. It means to call near. It means to invite. It means to pray. You know what that means? He goes, if you would just be willing to mourn for your sin as I lead you, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my comfort and spirit and me, are gonna, me and you are going to communicate and we're going to start walking together. Prayer. And also I'm going to encourage, I'm going to strengthen you, I'm going to instruct you, instruct you, and I'm going to teach you. That's what the comfort word comfort means. I'm going to be there with you, instructing you, teaching you, walking with you, encouraging you when you're down. I'll, get, I'll help you get back up. We're going to get through this, but you're never going to do it alone again. You're never going to feel alone again because I'm going to be with you. But this is what God says. I don't walk with sin. I walk with those that have repented from sin. Say, well, does God leave me when I sin? No, God doesn't leave you. You leave. <laughs> he's not moving. He's just, he's right here. And God says, come back. Come back home, son. Come back home, daughter. You're so far away from, yes, my spirit is living in you, but my spirit in you is grieved and there's no peace and there's no joy and there's no revelation and there's no encouragement and there's no life. Come on, come back home. And I pray in this fast that we'll draw close to God and we'll be willing to acknowledge that our, our sins and be willing, someone say, be willing to change. And the last thing, may this fast produce the kind of sorrow that leads us away from our old life so we can live a new life. Does anybody want to come out of this with a new life? With a new life. I'm talking about, you're a Christian, but he said, I already got a new life. But God wants to renew your new life and make it a brand new, new life. Say, so, well, can that happen? Yeah, you could be renewed every single day. Because as you go to another level, you're no longer the same person you were. There's more to your life. There's more joy. There's more peace. There's more wisdom. There's more power. There's more effectiveness. There's more purpose. There's more. You could get to know God better and more. And this is what happens when you get to know God better and you get to know more and you develop that relationship. You're able now to introduce people and help them find the Savior that you know. It's all at stake now. This is it. 2 Corinthians 7.10 says this. For the kind of sorrow God wants, and we're talking about personal change. Sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. What he's saying is, if you just feel sorry for what you've done because you got caught, or you just don't like the way you feel, what you're looking for is a band-aid or you're looking for some relief. And we see that happen a lot. People come and they just want relief. They don't want to change. They just want relief. So they'll come and they get prayed for. And this is what happens. They experience relief. But there's no change. And because there's no change, there's no repentance, it's not causing them to walk away. See, things are miserable. It might be really miserable right now. And could it be the only thing that's stopping God from turning it around for you is that still you have sorrow. You don't, you don't like the way things are going, but you're still not willing to repent and turn away from it. And God is saying, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. And I, I, right now my spirit is moving upon you, not for you to remain the same or to feel better, but for you to really turn to me so I can save you and make you whole and make you complete and heal you. Be willing to let it go so you can receive everything that God has for you. The Bible says the sorrow with repentance leads to salvation, leads to this new life, leads to this new beginning, leads to change, leads to miracles, leads to breakthroughs, leads to abundance, leads to prosperity, leads to eternal life. But the sorrow that doesn't have any repentance or there's no desire to change, I want to continue sinning. I just want to feel a little better. That sorrow, that kind of mindset leads to death, spiritual death, separation from God, emptiness, deep depression, deep fear. 
darkness, torment. It leads to spiritual death now and for eternity. Today's your day. If you're out here and you're saying, Pastor, we're ready to start this fast. I'm ready to start this fast. How many, how many are ready to start this fast? So what are we doing? Why are we fasting? To draw close to God. Why are we fasting? For change. I want you to walk around with a, I want you to get a journal because I want you to spend time with God every day. The more time you spend with God, the more change you're going to experience. I'm not trying to be religious about it. I'm trying to be intentional. I want you to be intentional. I want, to put, I want you to, let's do this. Let's put God on our schedule. Every morning you're going to get a little 15, 10 minute, it's actually 10 minute video. Eight minutes, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, around there. And we're going to hear the video, apply what we're learning. Maybe it's time to get a new Bible for 2021. Where can I get a Bible? You can get one online. You could go to Barnes & Noble. They got, some, they got some Bibles. You could check them out in these 21 days. Well, I, I don't know if I have time to spend, you know, I don't have a lot. My, I'm really busy. Well, you're not that busy anymore because we just put, took eating off your schedule. <laughs> so the time, let's just put it this way. The time you would spend on eating, why don't you replace it that time and spend time with the Lord? Oh, my gosh. How spiritual you're going to be. Because some of us have a lot of time eating. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch, and all the other stuff. Okay? Spend some time with the Lord. Get a journal. Write down your favorite scripture that you read. I, I, would, I would say this. Read a chapter a day. Well, you could start with the book of Matthew. Just read a chapter a day. And then write down your favorite scripture as you highlighted your Bible or on app, whatever. Highlight. And then you write out your favorite scripture and then what God is telling you. Why not? Why don't you spend some time writing down some vision? Take your life serious. God takes your life serious. He saved you. He has a plan for your life. Just get some downloads. Put yourself in a, a room all by yourself with God. Clean out maybe even a closet. Organize your closet. Make a little corner for you and God. Put a desk in a garage. Whatever you need to do. And make a little place where you and God meet. This is where me and God meet. There might be chaos all around it, but that little area is neat. It's organized. And you look forward to spending time there. Clean it up. Maybe put a candle there and get ready to hear, put some music, get a little, little player, little music player, put some worship music, open up your Bible, start studying, read a chapter understand it. You could get a commentary online and figure out what it's saying if you don't understand it. But this would be great that if anyone were to ask you, what did God tell you today? And you could say, well, you know, God told me, I read the scripture. It really meant something to me. And this is what God told me from that scripture. Wouldn't that be great that every day God speaks to you? He will. Do you believe God will speak to you every day if you give him time? If you draw close to God, is he going to judge you? No. He's going to draw close to you. Hey, you got that? So spend a little time there. Um, and then come to church every Sunday online, uh, online, come here. Stay connected. Let's do this together. And then let's write down some prayer requests too. Write down. Who am I praying for? Pray and fast. Who am I praying for? Make a nice little, make a nice list. And bring that list before the Lord every single day. Could, and this is what's going to happen. Wouldn't it be awesome that in 2021, that list is taken care of? God says, I can't answer a prayer you never made. Write down. Take your prayer life serious, okay? We're going to write down some goals this year. We're going to spend 21 days fasting. And at the end of the, end of the whole thing, we're going, to have, we're going to do, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come together and we're going to hear some prophetic words from mighty men of God that have been praying and seeking God. And they're going to come bring us a word for 2021. We're going to meet, that's 27th, 28th, and 29th, and the 31st on Sunday. We're going to come together, hear from God. And also, on that last week, we're going to bring a special offering before the Lord and say, God, here's my first fruit offering. This is the best of the first increase I've gotten. This is an offering that's different than my tithe. It's different than a regular offering. This is a special offering that I'm worshiping you. And I'm saying with this offering, I'm putting you first. He goes, you put me first is what God says. I'll add everything to you. The whole year will be covered. I got you. This is what God wants to do. So if you're here, uh, here or you're online, and you say, Pastor, I want a new start. I want a new beginning. I heard this. I need change. I want personal change. Or I want to draw closer to God. Well, this is your moment. 
If you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven. And we just had uh, uh, Michael sitting on the front row, and he says one of his friends just passed away um, today. And, well, how did he pass away? Well, he went in the shower. He somehow fainted, hit his head on something, and the paramedics came, and they couldn't revive him. That was it. He passed away. He was 44. How old was he? 44? 40. Just turned 40. Young guy. We don't know what tomorrow holds. And we have one of the guys, um, um, Slim, um, six foot Slim. He, he's come here. He's been a comedian at our church. He passed away. He's come here. He passed away last month or le less than a month ago. Yeah. How old was he? 44. He was 44. He passed away. Young guys are passing away. How do you pass away? It's sickle cell anemia, right? Yeah. You know, so why am I saying that? It's because, you see, if you don't have eternal life and you don't have life, I'll tell you this, you're going to be miserable here. They're going to be empty here, but this is the worst thing. You'll be empty for eternity. You'll be separated from God forever. And the Bible doesn't even talk about a real place of suffering and pain called hell. There's only two destinations when it's all said and done. There's only two lives. There's only two types of people. There's believers in Christ that have trusted Jesus as their Savior. And he's given them eternal life and a new life, an abundant life. And there, there are those. They might be religious. Like the scripture says, they were acting. But they never gave their lives to the Lord. They never let it go. Be willing to let it go. Let go of the bitterness. Let go of the unforgiveness. Let go of, the, let go, let go of it. It's, it's only hurting you. And receive the new life that God has for you. Will you exchange your life for God's life? We exchange the broken pieces for God's healing. Will you exchange your broken heart for God's restoring of your dreams and life and make you whole? We exchange your, exchange your addiction for freedom. We exchange the, the deception that's been going all around you for finding a life that's honest and true, a man of character, woman of character. I want to change. Well, God could do it today. Give your life to Jesus and Christians. Let's fast for 21 days, not only for our change. Let's fast for our friends' change, our, our neighbors' change, our families' change. Because this is what God does. He changes us, and then he uses us as a conduit of change. Because if I could change you, I could change people through you. I love it. What a great life. You could have it today. If that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want eternal life, you want to be born again, I'm done. I'm ready to turn away from my sin. I am done. I want new results. Okay, you could have it today. Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. And I thank you for speaking to me today and telling me I could have a relationship with you. If I take this one step to draw close to you, you'll run to me. I thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me, for not judging me, but reaching out to me and calling me. And today I'm asking you, Lord, to save me. Forgive me for all my sins and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I'm saved. I'm born again. I have eternal life. And from this day forward, I will live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, I'm going to say a big congratulations. We love you. God loves you. And all he wants is a relationship with you. That's it. I said, well, where do we come in? All we want is a relationship with you. We're family. We do this together. Your next step is, say it with me, next step. Your home, next step. Next step. Take the next step. Because faith without a next step is dead. It doesn't produce any results. I want to get an education. You can sign up for school, but if you never go, you don't get an education. You just gave your life to Jesus. There's a next step in your growth. And we got a, we got a, we got a website called igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com. 
So you, all you do is igotsave.com, put that in your browser. It'll take you to your next step. Just put your information there and we'll help you in your spiritual growth. This Sunday we'll be here at 9 and 11. We'd love to see you here. We're going to be talking about goal setting. Get ready for the greatest year of your life. It can be with God. Nothing's impossible. Love you. God bless you. If anybody needs prayer out there, I want you to go online. Just write your prayer request. We got a team of moderators that will be praying for you. We love you. God bless you. See you this Sunday. Get ready. Tomorrow, we're starting this fast. God bless you. We're also going to be meeting with you online, me and Lisa, once in a while. So God bless you. We love you. Remember this. If God's for you, there's no one that could come against you. You need prayer at home? Pray for one another. Lay hands on one another. The Spirit of God is with you. Love you guys.